Watchdog.com. People chopping it up in the chat, giving their game predictions right now in the chat. Most everybody thinking it's going to be a blowout in favor of Syracuse this week. We'll see what our next guest thinks about it. As we bring in our guy, Eric Dungy, for our weekly uh, Friday visits. What's up, Eric? Good to have you on. Uh, as always, uh, what are you feeling this week? I guess we'll start with this. You know, we, we talked about it on post game last week. Have you learned anything about this team yet? What what did 65 to nothing uh, teach you last week? Well, it showed me that they can be efficient offensively and that defensively. Again, we talked about the zero points, but I believe it was mentioned that they crossed the 50 yard line once. That's just impressive regardless of who you're playing, um, especially for, you know, the third and fourth strings getting in there and continuing that. So that just speaks uh, to Rocky Long and what he's got going on over there defensively. And I feel like post game last week, we were just talking a lot about offensively, how good things looked, but gosh, I mean, your defense wins championships again. And I, I think back even to my, my year that we went, you know, 10 and three, and we had a very solid defense and um, granted on offense, we were just trying to score 21, 35 points. And we knew we'd be good because defense was going to get us the ball a couple times and um, be good from there and move on. But I'm excited for Western Michigan. This will be another, uh, tougher challenge um i do still think that syracuse should you know put the beat on them there but um it will be good to see if they can uh handle a little more a little tighter coverage um for the receivers there and if they can make those contested catches and i want to see like allen against a little stouter defense and defensive front yeah and uh, we'll see how it goes obviously you know colgate it was going to be a blowout no matter how it went last week but to actually pitch a shutout eric i think dino said on his show last night that only five teams in the country actually uh, tossed a shutout last week, so I, I guess even though it's Colgate, right, like to, to get literally a zero on the board still means something. Oh, definitely. Uh, shutout is a shutout. And like I said, even not even, you know, having them get a field goal attempt, it's uh, it's an impressive thing to do. And granted, Syracuse was definitely, or uh, Colgate was definitely inferior, but um, it was, it's still incredible to see that. And I'm hoping that we can continue this and gives the guys some confidence going forward. They're chomping at the bit there to prove that, hey, you know, we're, we're, the, we're the team from the first half of the season last year, and we're going to continue that. And it starts right now with Western Michigan and doing the same thing and rolling over from last week. How much do you think there is of something like that in the locker room, Eric? You know what it's like to you go through seasons, and people forget. Like, Syracuse started 6-0 and last year, and because of – the way the season ended, like, you know, the, the rest of the world forgets about that. Is, is that something they, they focus on? Is that something you can, like, draw motivation from in the locker room that you're like, hey, wait a minute, like, we are a good team? Yeah, no, definitely. You always learn from the bad, and um, I think it'll be big this year. For a lot of the guys who were on that team last year, they understood how, how great things were when they were 6-0. and They are talking about, you know, college football playoffs, and you, you can't read the news articles, though. That's what you always say. It's got to be week by week. It's that mentality that you have to have, but it's good for them to know, hey, we were in this situation last year we know what we got to do we have to focus it's a long season we have to go in every single week uh, treat every opponent differently and have the utmost respect for them and at the end of the day we got to do our job and that's just play by play and every every game's a new canvas um so i think it will granted how frustrating it was last year and i'm saying frustrated we still went to a bowl game but uh so Mm -hmm. Their expectations are very high. The community has high expectations for this team. And year eight of Dino Babers, people want results. And um, I know Coach Babers is going to be, you know, harping on his guys. Hey, we got to get this because the community needs it. And, um, you know, as, a, as an alum, it's what you want to see. And you know that they have the talent there. They have all the talent in the world. It's just making sure that they can um, put it to work now. I can tell, man, you, you are really excited about LaQuint Allen. You, 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 met, you, you mentioned him like every time we're talking about something, LaQuint is, you know, he's fast out of your mouth here. What, what is it about this guy that, that is giving you such hope for him? This man, week? I'm just, I'm LaQuint Allen's number one fan club right now. I love a hard running running back, and um, I think he's just got a lot to prove right now, um, not to, to people, but to himself as well. Um, and again, it goes back to just knowing his cousin and just knowing the way that that family takes. It's just different in them and it means more. Um, and I'm just rooting for the guy and I'm hoping the best for him. And um, again, I just, I truly uh, appreciate a, you know, a gritty running back like he is. And, you know, he's got a little swagger to him too. And um, I just go back to think about like Dante Strickland kind of reminds me of him where he's just wants to put in the work, doing everything that he can, proving himself and uh, maybe a little undersized here, but I think, uh, you know, his hopefully his numbers are going to, you know, put that to shame. 
Eric Dungy with us as he is every Friday. Eric will also be with me uh, after the game tomorrow night for our post-game uh, coverage. So do give a, a ring after the game tomorrow. You can talk to uh, Eric afterwards. You know, Western Michigan, I get it. You know, Syracuse played Colgate. They played St. Francis. What can we read into that? I, I don't really know. But they, they ran the ball 67 times last week, which is a, a crazy number for almost 340 yards. I think we know last year, Eric, at least back half of the season, Syracuse's run defense was not great. What opportunity is this for, you know, the, the run defense uh, to show their little different thing here tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, Rocky Long's going to have a challenge here. And not only did they run the ball 67 times, but you didn't really get a good look at how uh, how those offensive weapons are at receiver for, for Western Michigan. They proved that, um, I believe, Jack Salapak, or I, mean, I hope I'm saying that right, but whatever, Jack, Western I think you are. Western Michigan quarterback. He, he threw the ball, I mean, 18 for 24 or 18 for 26, 170 yards. I mean, that's not a bad showing. Shows that you can be efficient, and they were getting it down on the ground. I'm surprised they were able to run the ball 67 times with the new clock and how everything works now. Um, if that's the way that they're going to be doing against Syracuse, I don't imagine, you know, 65 points getting put up. It's just going to be, you know, a little more limited possessions here and there with them, you know, having more time possession and clock management, unless Syracuse is able to force them to go three and out and make them start throwing the ball and proving what they can do on the outside, as opposed to just running between the tackles and getting those guys 30 and 20 carries, those two running backs, which is, that's a that's a tough uh, tough day in the office for those guys. They're probably feeling it uh, even today. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't ever think of like a, a second running back that had twenty carries. Like that doesn't make sense. So, like I, I don't know how that's even possible. And you mentioned the new clock rules, Eric. Like to to be able to run that many plays in the new clock rules. That tells me that they must have really been hustling and hurrying up to do this. You know that from running the tempo offense. How tricky is that? As a defense, like even if that, even if they're running the same thing at you and you know what's coming, how tricky is it to stop tempo like that coming? Oh, out? it's incredibly tricky, especially when it's just, you know, the repetitive run, you know, you're pulling tackle, pulling guard or whatever it may be. But, you know, those big boys, they get moving. So it just shows that, that Western Michigan, they probably got some, uh, you know, well-conditioned linemen up there. And then defensively, they're probably used to it as well if they're seeing that every day in fall camp. Um, so this will be a tougher challenge, like I said, and I'm excited to see how Syracuse handles that. Um, and I'm, I'm sure they're just chomping at the bit to get out there and prove to themselves, like, we, this is still us. This is who we can do. And 65-0 speaks a lot. But um, against Colgate, it's, you know, somewhat expected. Granted, you know, 65-0 is still kind of unheard of. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. Um but again, like I said, this is this is going to be a, a fun game to watch, and you'll learn a lot from Syracuse and how they will be going forward this season um, about how they kind of respond to adversity. There's going to be adversity here, um, whether it be an interception, a fumble, uh, a big play here and there, and see how they can uh, bounce back from that. I don't know about you, Eric. Uh, you mentioned Rocky Long earlier. You know, obviously, he, he didn't have to do anything exotic last week in, in play calling uh, on defense. It just wasn't necessary. They, yes, there were blitzes, but there there wasn't anything crazy going on on defense last week. How much, um, you know, more of the, the Rocky Long experience as a D coordinator do you think we see this week? I think we see a little more. Um, I think his in-game adjustments are going to be something that I'm going to keep an eye on, you know, because uh, he's – you're almost chasing ghosts at this point. You know, the first game, first two games of the season – Teams aren't showing much, especially against St. Francis and Syracuse against Colgate. You're not going to show much, and that's what we were talking about with LeQuint. Oh, we didn't get any receptions out of the backfield. Why are you going to show that against this? We're going to save that, keep it in our back pocket for when we truly do need it. Um, so teams are you know, safeguarding some of their plays, safeguarding some of their uh, formations or whatever it may be right now. But um, if the game's tight, I'm sure we'll see some of those tricks get pulled out and make sure uh, they get that W, which is the most important thing at the end of the day. Let me ask you this, because it, it was a, a coaching change there. Uh, Tim Lester, and obviously uh, you know Tim uh, quite well, Got uh, is now with the, the Packers. Uh, you know, Unfortunately, we all like uh, Tim, and he was integral in the, your college story uh, getting here. But your times playing against him, it sounds like they kept the chunk of their defensive staff. What was it like for you uh, the, the time you got to play against this defense? What, what challenges do they present? Uh, I mean, now that I'm done, they didn't really present many challenges. Um, you always... <laughs> just, I'm just going to throw it out there. I mean, we had a field day with. Let it, let it fly, Eric. Uh, let, let it fly. I mean, I, I think I played two quarters. I had 200 rushing yards, which was kind of unheard of. I mean, I like to say I'm fast, but I'm not. I'm not that fast. So, um, I just think they have. Uh, it was kind of what Syracuse was dealing with early in our career, where 
we the backups just didn't meet the other backups um, that you were playing against. So that's where you kind of saw the loss. So if we saw a new safety come in, a new corner go in, guess who we're going after that play? We're going to go after that guy, make sure he he's up to par. And um, if he messed up, trust me, we're going to go right back to him every single time he's in there. So coaches are keeping an eye on that. And it's um, it's kind of like a game, big game of chess. Um, you're trying to find the pieces, trying to find the pawns out there that you can expose. Um, and it's just, uh, it's kind of fun to see you know, from the outside perspective, as opposed to being, you know, whether it be the king or the queen on the on the field at the time. Uh, I say that that game actually, Eric. Uh, it was our answer to our trivia question yesterday for tickets we were giving away because that 200 yards you put up on him was the the most rushing yards by a quarterback in school history. And you're right, you, you played a, a little more than half the game, so mm-hmm. it could have been a lot more if it uh, if it came down to it. You know, thinking of Tim Lester, and you know, he he was the guy that brought you to, to Syracuse in many ways. You still keep in touch with him. You know, he's with the Packers now. What, what's your relationship like with Tim all these years later? Coach Lester, Coach Schaefer, I've you know always kept in touch with them. Um, just phenomenal, phenomenal men and I was really just honored to um, have I was only with them for six months and just for them to continue to stay in touch with however many years it's been out of college for me um, making me feel old here um, but you know I got the utmost respect for them and I hope for the best and you know a little salty against Western Michigan I think they did him wrong there so I'm really hoping Syracuse can put a beat on him now I got nothing against uh, or nothing really to root for not that I was rooting for Western Michigan but I always loved Coach Lester so now I'm really hoping Syracuse kind of you know puts the herd on him yeah, it's funny. I think we were saying this like Syracuse fans are more grieved that Tim Lester got fired at Western Michigan, it feels like, than Western Michigan fans because everyone around here liked him just because he was a, a, a nice guy and uh, fun to be around all those years. It's a it, it's a strange circumstance, but uh, wishing him the best now uh, with the Packers. we got Eric Dungy with us on our Friday visit. Let, let's hit a little Air, uh, Garrett Schrader here before we let you go, Eric. You know, solid performance last week, complete 75% of his balls, the one kind of head-scratching uh, interception, but didn't really set a foot wrong besides that. But where where do you think we see week one to week two what, what Garrett's going to put out there this week? Yeah, and you know what, to the test for Garrett, that interception, it looks like there was some miscommunication um, with him and the receiver. It looked like he was trying to throw the ball more so vertical, and the receiver bent it, bent it in toward the safety or to the goalpost, you could say. So just a little miscommunication there, which is frustrating as a quarterback, but you want to get those out early when you're in a 65 to a blowout lead um, what I want to see from Garrett I mean there's nothing to really knock on him from last week but the only thing I did really see was it was just I felt like the deep ball accuracy wasn't there I don't know if that's because they weren't um, really getting the full speed reps they were needed um, in fall camp I know that he was on a pitch count um, throughout fall camp especially the last two weeks and it does take a while for you to really feel comfortable with those re- with those receivers and the speed because game speed is different from practice speed um, and that was always a frustrating part because you, you don't want to burn out your receivers throughout the week you want them to have fresh legs but at the same time you do need to, do need to work on your timing so um, if you're putting the ball a deep ball on the the receiver's back hip and they're having to stop and slow down that's the difference between you know a 40 yard gain and potentially an 80 yard touchdown so it's the little things like that that hopefully uh, are going to be carried over and improved upon next game and i'm sure you know garrett was keeping them after practice hey guys sorry two or three that's all i need from you um, i remember i used to deal with the guys and you know maybe buy them a slurpee or whatever beverage they wanted at the time um, afterward for the hard work but i'm sure he's going to be fixing that up here soon yeah, is the deep ball, uh, is, is that the hardest one to dial in, Eric? It, you know, obviously it's it's farther away. Uh, obviously that makes sense. But is it is it does it take longer to get in the rhythm of that, you know, when you're getting back into the flow of things in the season? Um, I, I think for the most part, just the first couple of games. Because like I said, when their adrenaline's jumping, um, you know, the, the guys who are running a 4-5-5 could be running a, you know, 4-4-9 four, four, in the game. Um, and those 0.6 mm-hmm. milliseconds, is a, it's a big difference, um, especially when you're just working on time and everything or if a guy gets bumped. You just want to make sure that you're seeing their release you're seeing um, how they're responding and you just know throughout the game i mean i knew steve ishmael for him i could just throw it in a 20 yard you know circumference and he's gonna go up and grab <laughs> it um, as opposed to a smaller guy where like sean riley you can try to put it over his upshot shoulder and he'd go and run and get it with his speed so it's just kind of playing the different nuances um in kyp know your personnel know who you're throwing to and making sure that you know whoever it is you can put them in the best position to make a play and get some yards for uh for the team all right, Eric, always good to chat. Well, we'll be with you on post game tomorrow, and thanks for hopping on. Thanks, Brian.